come on, there we go. Again, good morning and happy Father's Day. We're going to be going... Um, we're going to get our main thought uh, this morning from Exodus 20, our starting point. I push that back and then... okay. Um, Father's Day is a time in which we traditionally honor Dad. We recognize that he has, in fact, children. He has begotten children. He has raised children. Uh, and we talk about it as a day that we honor fathers, but I have to I have to wonder sometimes, do we really even understand what it means? We're feeding back? I'm not hearing it. Okay. Uh, I have to ask sometimes if we even understand what it would mean to, to honor our fathers. I mean, most dads, of course, enjoy getting a card and, and a little gift of some kind that just says, Dad, we love you, we, you know, we appreciate you. Uh, but do we honor fathers? And for that matter, do we know what honor is? Um, a fairly close synonym to honor would be respect. And yet this word, like the word honor, sometimes uh, seems to lose its meaning in the modern world. The world says that respect is something that has to be earned. But, you know, such a teaching is actually contrary to God's word. Uh, it's popularity that is earned. And if you do what other people want or present an image with which they want to be associated, they'll like you. And what's important in this world nowadays is they'll buy your product. But somehow we have gotten confused between popularity and honor. And they are two very, very different things. Uh, we're going to look at the subject of honor today and what it means and to whom it should be given. And since it's Father's Day, we're going to start with Exodus 20, verse 12, which says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together in your house, and we thank you for each one here. Lord, thank you for fathers today, and we just pray, uh, Lord, that you will bless all the dads today. Uh, Lord, help us to... Remember that we have the best Father ever in you. We have the only perfect Father in you. And help us, Lord, to grow in our understanding with you and in our walk with you, that we might bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, you know the needs of each one here. Pray that you meet them according to your perfect will. We ask you to bless our time together. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, looking at Exodus twenty twelve, this is... Uh, this is part of what many people would consider the Ten Suggestions. No? No, it's not. It's commandments. Commandments. But it's, it's not a suggestion, but people treat it that way sometimes. But what does it mean to honor? We're told, honor thy father and thy mother. Uh, have you ever heard uh, it said that somebody's words carried a lot of weight? You ever heard that? Uh, uh, in a courtroom, it might be said that the judge's word carries a lot of weight. You know, it's a way of saying that they are to be taken seriously. And in contrast, we often say, take things lightly. Uh, well, the idea of authority and weight is actually something that goes all the way back to the Hebrew word here. Because it speaks of carrying weight. And it was the word for showing honor to somebody because they, their word carried weight. Um, in the Hebrew language, to honor someone was to recognize their authority and not just to recognize it, but to act like you recognize it, to, to treat their words as words that carried a lot of weight. Now, of course, we have the word honor in the, in, in the New Testament, too, and that is from a Greek word which speaks of greatly valuing uh, and considering someone or something as very precious. So the biblical words for honor tell us um, that those we are to honor should be considered very valuable and their words should not be taken lightly. So according to God's word, fathers and, and mothers too, for that matter, are to be honored, to be recognized as being in authority simply because God has declared it to be so. And parents 
should be not only recognized as authority, but they should be greatly valued. Um, most children don't think about, you know, the fact that their parents, you know, provide for their needs and often for their wants. You know, we, we, when I was a kid, I didn't think about those things. I didn't think about how hard it might be for mom and dad to make ends meet. But... Uh, as time went on and when I became an adult, I began to see how, how very expensive life could be. I, I gained a greater uh, understanding of what my parents uh, had done for their children. Um, when we look at the, the uh, command to honor parents, a, a couple of things I think we need to know. First of all, it is not a conditional Command. It doesn't say honor your father and your mother if they're cool. It doesn't say honor your father and mother as long as they give you everything you want. It doesn't say that. It's not a suggestion and it's not conditional. Notice that this commandment does have a promise attached to it. And that is that your days may be long. The promise um, would have meant something very specific to the Jewish people uh, back at the time the law was given because also in the law um, we find something very important uh, something about how very important the honoring of one's parents is to God Deuteronomy 21 says if a man have a stubborn or rebellious son which will not obey his, the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and that when they have chastened him will not hearken unto them then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of the city and unto the gate of the, his place and they shall say unto the elders of his city this our son is stubborn and rebellious he will not obey our voice he is a glutton and a drunkard and all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. God wanted people to take the honoring of parents seriously. He, com he, he considers the dishonoring of one's parents to be an evil thing, and it should not have any place among his people. Honor should start at home. And then it will be carried into other aspects of people's lives. Uh, there are people we are to honor, not because they've won a popularity contest, um, not because they provide us with what we want all the time, but simply because of the position in which they are found. Um, parents have such a position. Again, God simply says, honor them. He doesn't say honor them if you want to. He didn't say honor them if they've earned it. He just says honor it. They're in that position. That's all it takes. How about this? How about employers? Now, we don't have uh, uh, situations where people own their servants uh, anymore, at least not in this country. But uh, Ephesians 6, 5 says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Well, while your employer doesn't own you, he does buy your time and ability. He pays you for that. And therefore, you should do your job for him as if you're doing that job for Christ. We should be diligent and honorable workers simply because God says so. Spiritual leaders are found in here too. 1 Thessalonians 5 says, We beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. And I can't help but think that one of the ways I feel more like people love me is when a church is at peace among itself. Uh, I've been in situations where there was a lack of peace and... Um, that, that's a hard place. It was, it was kind of a running uh, joke at seminary that nobody would want to pastor the church in Corinth because they were divided in every way imaginable. So I look at this and, and I think, well, one, one great joy to any pastor is that a church is united in godly love. 
Um, but, you know, from some of the things I have seen and heard from people through the years, I've sometimes wondered if these verses are missing from certain Bibles. Um, perhaps they're just neglected since the honor, or the subject of honor is generally neglected uh, itself. Um, if we have failed to honor those we are commanded to honor, then we should go to the Lord in repentance and confess that we have not honored him. Because if he says honor your father and your mother and we decide not to, we've not only dishonored father and mother, but by doing that we've dishonored the one who gave the commandment. So, here's another important one. Spouses. Hebrews 13.4 tells us that marriage is honorable. It is to be valued and prized and protected. It is the first institution that God gave to mankind. 1 Peter 3.7 tells husbands to honor their wives. Now husbands, uh, there should be no one on earth whom you treasure as much as your wife. God sees you as one. You're a unit. And there should be no one you treasure more than your wives. Now Ephesians 5.33 says that a wife is to reverence her husband. Wives, there should be no other man on earth for whom you should have more concern or respect. And I'll tell you one thing that, that makes men happy is to feel respected. Of course, that means we need to strive to be respectable at the same time. But we are commanded as husbands to honor our wives, and wives are commanded to reverence husbands. These are things God says. And it doesn't, it doesn't say if he, you know, if, if he or she gives you everything that you want. It just says do it. Now there's more. I keep doing that. I'm gonna. Sorry. First Peter two says, "Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or to governors as unto them that are sent for him, for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men." Simply put, God commands us to be law-abiding citizens. And that's, that's why I cannot agree with, with these various pastors that have been telling their people, ignore the shelter and order place. It's law. It's law. And to honor God, we have to honor what he says, and he tells us to honor the law. Nobody has told us we can't be Christians. Nobody has told us we can't love the Lord. Nobody, in fact, uh, uh, there's a thing I found very funny a while back when, when the shelter in place first happened. Somebody posted the thing. It said, you know, pastors five years ago and had a picture of this little chihuahua with his teeth bared. And it said, Facebook is evil. And it said, pastors today and had the dog looking all content. And it said, join me for my sermon on Facebook. <laughs> we, we have... Made good use of technology. And I'll be honest, some of those sites have even done things to help churches. Uh, Zoom. We, we did some Zoom meetings. They, they took off their 40-minute limit. So we could go as long as we, we needed to go. Um, we haven't really been picked on. Everybody's been told to shelter in place. And we are to do these things... So that we will honor Christ. If we don't honor God's word, we can't say we're honoring Christ. We are to do it for the Lord's sake, because of him. Now, I have faced some criticism for taking the position that we as a church will obey the laws regarding the shelter in place and such. But I've, I've taken this position because I don't see another one I can take and honor God. And we want to be honoring God. God has not suggested, but he has commanded that we 
be those who render honor to parents, to leaders, to our spouses. And it's impossible to honor God if we're not doing what he says. So I want to encourage you, set your heart to honor God in every aspect of your life. If we do that, we might be found doing what we were made to do, which is to glorify God. Otherwise, we stand in danger of being compared to the religious leaders of the first century to whom Jesus said, you hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, this people draw nigh unto me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. We don't want anyone to be have, have any right to say that about us. We want to be found drawing close to the Lord with our hearts by doing the things that he says. Now, I, I do want to say something else this Father's Day. It, it is sadly true that there are some fathers and, and some mothers who choose not to act in honorable ways. Uh, there are parents who have been quite abusive, and it's, it's a very, very sad reality and, and, and an infuriating one to think of people being cruel to children. But I want to proclaim one more thing. For anybody who may have felt let down by parents, maybe they dealt with an abusive or neglectful parent. Um, so for those who may have been abandoned or abused, uh, and in fact, for anyone who has imperfect parents on earth, and that would include my children, that would include everybody's children. The point I want to make is, while there are no parents who are perfect on earth, there is a perfect parent. And that is God. He's the only perfect father. He loves perfectly. If you have trusted in Jesus Christ, you have been born again into the family of God. He promises he will never leave you. He wants what the best, uh, what, what's best for you, and he knows perfectly what that is. Now, if you've never called upon Jesus Christ to save you from the eternal consequences of your sin, why not? Why don't you do that today? If you call on him and receive him as Savior, you will be born into the family of God, and Father's Day will take on a whole new meaning for you. What a wonderful thing it is to have God as our Father. You know, I am, I am so blessed that my family remembers me on Father's Day. And uh, my prayer is, you know, my, my earthly father has, has left this life and he's with the Lord. And uh, so I can't do anything more to honor him on, in, in this life other than to try not to bring shame upon the family name. <laughs> but I can be very careful to try not to dishonor my Heavenly Father. And that, with his help, I will endeavor to do. And I encourage you to do that so and rejoice in a wonderful thing about having God as your father. Think about this. Once a child comes into a family, that can't be undone. Your child is your child forever. If you're a child of God, that is forever. What a wonderful family relationship we have with the almighty creator. This morning, praise him, thank him, thank him for earthly fathers, and thank him for being such a wonderful father to us. Let's stand together. We're not going to have... Um